Hi everyone and welcome back to Beverly Stunning Creations. In this DIY I'll teach you how to make two very different but beautiful candle holders. I consider both of them to be glam and blingy. In the first DIY I'll teach you how to make this really unique silver and gold animal print candle holder. You'll also see that it was super easy and inexpensive to make. In my second DIY, I'll teach you how to make this unique, over-the-top, glamorous candle holder. Although I love them both, this one is my absolute favorite of the two. I can't say that this one was inexpensive, but I can say it was easy to make. All that you will need to recreate this is some chandelier pendants, a few Dollar Tree items, and a crystal knob. And speaking of crystal knobs, I'm hosting a new giveaway where I give away two crystal knobs each to four of my subscribers. So if you'd like to participate in this giveaway, I'll leave full details in the description box below the video. This video is sponsored by Lamu. Lamu are the makers of this really cool decorative tabletop fireplace. This tabletop fireplace is made of high quality, heat resistant steel. And it's super easy to use. As you can see, it opens on either end. Before I put this together again, I want to show you what comes in the box. You'll receive two of these little plastic tools that you use to suck up the tiki torch fluid. And you can also use it to add essential oils to your fireplace. You'll also receive a pair of protective gloves. And it also comes with the fireplace cover. You can use it to put the flames out and to protect it from the elements while it's outside. It also comes with two high quality fiberglass wicks. And here's the one that I've tested and burned already. Now to put it together, you simply unscrew one end, insert the wick. You'll have to use a little pressure to get it to go in all the way. And then screw the end back on. Next, use the plastic tool that comes with the kit to suck up some of the torch fluid and then put it on top of the wick. I let the fluid soak into the wick for about 10 minutes, then saturated the wick a second time. I waited for the sun to go down so that you guys could get a better view. I then used a long stem lighter to light my tabletop fireplace. I think this tabletop fireplace is really cool. It's like having your own little personal fire pit on your patio but the best thing about it is that it's portable so you can pack it up and take it wherever you go they also sent this wine bottle tiki wicks kit and this kit is super easy to use as well all you need to do is add a bottle and some torch fluid this kit comes with three 14 inch high quality wicks three brass wick holders six rubber rings and three stainless steel lamp covers and you won't see all that I've mentioned because I've already constructed one of the wine bottle tiki torches here I'll just show you how to put one together I did have one wine bottle on hand but the opening was actually too big so I went out to Dollar Tree and I purchased one of these bottles and the opening of the bottle is a perfect fit I also found this bottle at Goodwill and I thought it was really pretty because it has a rose on the bottom. And the opening of this bottle works as well. Now I'll show you how simple it is to put the wine bottle tiki torch together. Add two of the rubber rings to the brass wick holder. Now put the wick inside the brass wick holder. Pour some tiki torch fluid inside the bottle. Insert the wick and it's ready to go. I took my tabletop tiki torch outside and lit it with my long stem lighter. I also draped my stainless steel lamp cover around the neck of the bottle so when I'm ready to put the fire out all I need to do is just drop it right on top. Alright guys this completes my review of the Lamu DIY tiki torch products. I really like them both. I can really see this one being used at an outdoor wedding reception or some type of outdoor event 
but I think they're both ideal for lighting up your garden, your tiki bar, patio, porch, or even an outdoor party. So if you like these Lamu products as much as I do, and you're interested in purchasing one, or maybe even both, I'll have a 20% discount code for each product in the description box below. Now on to the DIY. I want to start out by painting this base from Dollar Tree with some Mod Podge and glitter. And I want it to be gold, but I prefer it to be more of a champagne gold. So I'm going to mix some silver and gold glitter together and then mix it in with some Mod Podge. As you can see, I just slipped my hand on the inside of the vase and started painting on the mixture. I'm going to do one full coat. Let that dry, come in with the second coat. Let that dry and then finish off with the third coat of the mixture. Moving right along, all three coats of the mixture has dried completely. And here I have some decorative paper that I picked up from Joann's. And here's the skew if you're interested. I also have it listed underneath the video as well. I removed the sticker from my decorative sheet and then lined it up with my vase. And as you can see, it's almost a perfect fit. Next, I'll glue the sheet onto the vase using Gorilla Glue along with hot glue. Start out by adding glue to the edges and down the seam, and then hold the seam in place until the hot glue sets up. Add more glue around the border of the sheet, and then roll the sheet tightly around the vase. Make sure that it's smooth and that all the glue is intact, and then move on to the next step. Next, I'm going to trim out the top and the bottom of my vase with this gold bling that I picked up from Dollar Tree, and this is the bling with the adhesive on the back. I have a strip of three rows for the bottom of my vase, and the strip that goes on the top has two rows. And that's all there is to it. So now let's create a base for our candle holder. Next, I'll glue these two candle holders together using some Gorilla Glue. I bought these at Goodwill, but you can use the one from Dollar Tree as well. I applied the glue to one, stacked the other one on top, made sure that it was level, and then put it aside to dry. Now that the glue has set up on the candle holder, I'm going to spray the base of the candle holder with some gold spray paint. And then I'm going to use some silver spray paint on the top of the candle holder. I sprayed the candle with more of an ombre look, with it being more gold than silver. Next, I mix some silver glitter with the Mod Podge and put it on top of the silver spray paint. Once that dries, I'll come back in with some gold glitter and Mod Podge and paint it on top of the gold spray paint. Make sure to drag some of the gold glitter into the silver glitter to keep their gradient or ombre look. And here's what it looks like after the glitter dried. Next, I'll add some Gorilla Glue on top and then glue both pieces together. Now I'll put this aside to dry overnight. Moving on to the second DIY. Here I have another one of the Dollar Tree vases and it's the taller one. I'll leave the measurements in the description below and I also have some crystal pendants. Now what we're going to do is decorate the glass with these crystal pendants. So we'll need to remove these little glass discs from each pendant. I have a bag of pendants that I've already removed the discs from. So what I'm going to do is start out by gluing a row of these pendants around the perimeter of my vase. And I would calculate maybe about two and a half inches up. And I'll end up using three rows in all, so you can just kind of lay three rows against the glass in order to decide where you want to place your pendants. Your first row of pendants will be your top row. So you want to press the pendant against the glass to see where you want to add the glue. And you want to make sure that you use a really strong glue. Do not use Dollar Tree Fix All for this project. I put down a thin line of hot glue and Gorilla Glue beside each other on the pendant and then press it against the glass. Make sure that you put the glue in the right place on the pendant. 
and this is what it looks like after I put the first pendant in place. So now what you want to do is repeat this 13 more times. Yes, it's going to take 14 pendants to go around the first time. I'll continue to add the pendants to the vase, come back, and then move on to the next step. I added the remaining pendants, let it sit for an hour, and now I'm ready to move on to the next step. Starting on my second row, I took one pendant and placed it between two of the first pendants to get an idea of where I needed to add the glue. I added a dot of the Gorilla Glue to two of the pendants. And then I added Gorilla Glue and hot glue to the pendant that I'll be attaching. I made sure that the glue was making contact with the paste and the two pendants, held it in place until the hot glue set up, and then went on to the next one. I'll show you one last time, and then do the rest off camera. And here's what it looks like after I completed my second row. Isn't that gorgeous? It took 14 pendants to complete my second row as well. And here I'm just showing you how I use hot glue to make a more secure hole between the second and the first pendants. You can also see where I get a test pendant for my third and final row. The spacing of my third row is perfect but the pendant was cricket, so I removed it and started over. Add your third row by repeating the steps that you did when you added your second row. I'll do a couple more pendants on camera and then finish adding the rest off camera. Fast forward 25 minutes later, and this is what my candle holder looks like. And guys, it's really heavy, so I made sure to reinforce it again with more hot glue. So I'm going to set this aside for about 6 hours to let it set up while I put the base of this candle holder together. Here I have one of the Dollar Tree candle holders, and there's the skew. And again, I'll leave it in the description below. I also have one of these brown crystal knobs that I love so much. So again, like in a previous video, I'm going to glue the knob onto my candle holder. And again, if you decide to do this, use a really strong glue. Make sure that the knob is level and then set it aside to dry for about three hours. These two pieces have bonded together pretty good. So I decided to add some of those glass discs to the neck of the candle holder. And as you guys seen at the beginning of the video, they were not there. I removed them all because I really didn't like the look of it. So next, I added some glue to my second candle holder and I placed the glue just inside the rim of the top of the candle holder to make sure that I had a really good bond between the two. I then placed the candle holder on top of the knob made sure that it was level and then I put it aside to set up overnight. Next I used five of my pendants and one of my acrylic diamonds from Dollar Tree to create a flower for my vase. Again I'll be using both glues to adhere my flower onto my candle holder. I put a bead of both glues on the narrow end of my pendant and then placed it on the candle holder. And guys, you can see that I lost one of my lower pendants on the back of my candle holder. I'll replace that later, but just make sure that the base of your candle holder is completely dry before adding your flower. So that's the location of my first pendant. And we're doing a daisy design. I'll now add four more crystal pendants to duplicate the flower, and then finish the design with a diamond in the center. Okay, I'm done with my daisy. I'm really pleased with how it looks. I'll clean and re-glue the pendant back to the bottom of the candle holder and then let the glue set up overnight. This is early the next morning, 
and both candle holders are bonded together very well. So now I'll take more of the Gorilla Glue. I then put a generous bead of glue on top of the candle holder. I made sure that it was centered and then put both pieces together. So I'm going to leave these two pieces to bond for at least 12 hours. I'll come back and let you see what it looks like. Okay everyone, this concludes my DIY. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you plan on making one, please comment below. I'd love to hear about it. And don't forget to leave me that thumbs up because it's really important. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe and turn on your post notifications so that you won't miss my next upload. Alright guys, see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.